Um, so the basic idea of linking, as I said earlier on, if you look to the left here, we think about the World Wide Web, we think a lot about it as just being a lot of pages linked together. On the right-hand side, you'll see how a search engine looks at it more as a graph. You can see that uh, B is linking to A, B is linking to uh, C. There are a couple of simple assumptions that you can make from linkage data uh, that make it very important from the get-go. One, if I put a link from uh, my website to your website, that's basically me giving you a vote saying that to my end user, if you thought this information was good, then go to this guy's website because he has great stuff as well. And the second assumption is that if page A and page B are connected by a link, then we could be on the same topic. That could be a business topic, it could be a hobby, whatever it is. So those are the two basic assumptions that you can make from linkage data. And that's all based on a subset of network theory called citation analysis. John Kleinberg, back to Kleinberg and his uh, hit algorithm. Uh, it was fascinating because what he had done with what they call hubs and authorities, which is part of this algorithm, is discover uh, communities online. And basically, the hubs are these huge websites that have lots of links pointing out to authority websites. And in search, you'll hear people talking a lot about authorities. But then it went even further. So now, when you look at linkage data, on the uh, World Wide Web, not only are we looking at websites that link together and which ones are the most authoritative, you can actually discover what the subject matter is. You can just see what kind of topics people are discussing. So just for the benefit of those people who are interested in linking and why it's so important, um, one of the tips that I always give to my clients or when I was in the agency business is to try and find links that are within the community that you exist in. They're so much more important. So those green guys up there uh, probably don't need links from those gray guys down there. The gray guys down there, they're the spam guys. They're adult, it's porn, it's spam, whatever. So we need more links from within our own community. Um, the analogy that I use there is, is fairly interesting because it's not about the quantity. It's not about the number of links that you have. I mean, you could have um, more links than your competitor and still the competitor might rank more highly than you. And that's because it's about the quality of the link. Um, I'm an Irish Catholic. I can go to my local priest any day of the week and say, Father, bless me with a link. And, and he possibly would do. And then I can go to the next priest and ask him as well. But if I could just get this one link from the Pope, that would be the way to do it. So I developed a different idea on um, the way that I would go around selecting links. Um, I uh, worked with a guy who owned a restaurant in, uh, in London. and. Um, he inherited this website and asked me if I could help him to rank for restaurants, London, Fusion, London, blah. Ranking for a restaurant in New York or London is very, very difficult. So I was thinking about the ways and means I could do that. I could actually go out and try and get thousands of links, or I could be creative and just try and find the Pope. Uh, I actually found a Pope and two Cardinals. The Pope was the number one uh, food critic in London who uh, worked for... Um, uh, the local TV station there, and uh, the other guys were from the local uh, London newspaper, The Standard, uh, and also from Channel 4 Television. So I made it my mission in life. Didn't matter how long it was going to take, these guys were going to come and eat at this restaurant, and then I would get a link for it. And I don't care what I have to do, I will bribe them, kidnap their children, whatever it is, I'm going to get them to come and eat in the restaurant. Um, and the great thing about that is even if they come and eat at the restaurant and the food is crap, well, we still get a link anyway. <laughs> um, after a short while, after about three months, I managed to get all of them to eat in the restaurant. They did write the reviews. By the time I got the guy from um, the um, uh, local TV station to write uh, his review and link back to us, it just popped to the top like a cork. So seriously, it is much more about the uh, quality of the link than it is about the, uh, the quantity. So these are the early signals to search engines. This is what we've been doing for 10 years, for a decade. Front and center has been Google. Um, text and links, really important, but still susceptible to spam and manipulation, which is why Google is still full of crap. Uh, they're very good at some of the things that they do. The problem that you've got, though, is that the crawlers can't keep up with the rate of content and link creation, as you'll discover soon that Google, most people have this, there's a pervasive idea that Google has the entire World Wide Web uh, in its database, and yet they only have one tiny fraction of what exists on the World Wide Web. So whenever you do a search at Google, all you're seeing are results from the fraction of the web that they've managed to crawl. There's always a better answer somewhere else. There are too many relevant pages which are outside the scope of the search engine crawl. So 
The end user has changed remarkably as well for about 10 years in search engine optimization. All we were interested in was 10 blue links and how do we get ours to the top. That's what it used to look like all those years ago when you were on a 28K modem. And uh, the, like I say, the, the whole trick of the thing was to write a great title tag and get yourself to the top of the pile. If you take a look there now, it's something entirely different. Go on, be honest, guys. Tell me, where did your eyes go the minute I did that? Uh -huh, I know. So the minute that we start introducing different file types, the minute that universal search came around, now that we have broadband, the demand from the end user has become much greater. They want a much richer end user experience. In uh, conventional SEO wisdom, uh, people have said, as I say, when we were looking at the previous slide, uh, even if um, your competitor was at number one and you were at number three, if you wrote a more compelling title tag, the likelihood is that you would get more clicks on your link than you would get on the number one. So even being at number one might not be the best place to be. So writing a compelling title tag has been important. But I have to tell you guys, when I look at this, there is no compelling title tag in the world going to stop me clicking on that end picture there. I'm going to click that one. That's where I'm going. And there is a psychological value to that as well. Uh, I talked to some of the guys who worked in universal search. And basically, it's down to the fact that we can get a much quicker result because psychologically, you know what's on the other side of the click. Whereas with a link, you don't. You've still got to think about it. So end users have become much more demanding in what it is that they want, what they demand from a search engine or an information provider as it is. So the strongest signals we've had so far, the text on a page, you have to have keywords, you have to have them in the right place. That helps, although I've proven time and time again that the number one result at a search engine frequently doesn't have the keywords that you use to search for it. Linkage data, link anchor text, that's the underlined stuff that you click on, still very, very important. <laughs> link anchor text has been the workhorse for search engines. That's always been the biggest clue as to what the target page is about. And now the end user is starting to, uh, their voice is being heard with social media, with tagging, bookmarking, rating, and those kind of things. It still has a long way to go, but there is one signal, one area that search engines get the biggest clue. What is Anybody think the, the strongest signal to a search engine is at this point in time? No takers? So the strongest signal, much stronger than linkage data, is this. How many people have the Google toolbar attached to their browser? Yeah? Do you have any idea the amount of data that you're sending back to, to Google? So this is so important to Google because all search engines have suffered from this one problem. What happened next? We rank the documents, we put them in the top 10. You click and disappear, and we have no idea what happened next. There are all kinds of things that you can determine from the end user's behavior in terms of what they think the most popular uh, document is. For instance, we assume that the top 10 results at a search engine each one of those is the landing page, yet the toolbar has proved time and time again that sometimes the actual landing page is six clicks further down the line. So sometimes even when you look at results and think about um, the linkage data and there's no correlation, it's because people landed on a page and then the toolbar allows search engines to create user trails and follow that user to wherever their destination is. And if everybody ends up with one if everybody ends up with one page, then certainly those documents are going to be re-ranked. Quick question. When you say re-anchor text, are you talking about the link, the text between HTTP, the page wrap, and the... Yeah, yeah. So, the, so the, the link anchor text for those, I'm just assuming everybody knows, that's the bit that's underlined, and that's the bit that you would click on to go to the next page. It's not where the anchor ends on the other No, no, page. no. It's, I mean, the text itself. But basically, if you use descriptive link anchor text, for instance, click here means absolutely nothing to a search engine, but Blue Widget says, well, the next page is probably about Blue Widgets. So the other thing is that PageRank and other hyperlink-based algorithms, uh, they're elitist. It means that only web page creators get to vote. What about the end user? The way that uh, hyperlink algorithms work, it means that if you have a web page and you can point to mine, that's fine. But what about the 5 million or 10 million end users that don't have a web page? How do they get to vote? So they start re-ranking looking by click data. Biggest example or easiest example of that very quickly is the back button on a browser. If you're at number one at Google and people click on that link and they go to your page, and then three seconds later, hit the back button and go to the results. If that happens 1,000 times, Google can see that. 
It means that the page might be relevant to the keyword or the phrase, but it's not relevant to the end user. All of a sudden, you'll start to go back down the charts. So they use a couple of things that are really important, a combination of query data and um, browsing data. So query chains are the first thing. I mentioned before that you can actually see a result at number one or wherever it is in the results that doesn't actually contain the words that you're using, uh, that, you, that, uh, that you searched on. Um, again, analogy for that, it's a very, very simple one. A guy sits down in front of the computer and he types uh, the words special collection. He looks at the results and, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Users don't, not only do they not go to the second page anymore, they don't even scroll. What we do is we reformulate the query, and you'll find that you do this yourself. Take a few words out, or you add a few words. So the guy goes, special collection, that's not what I'm looking for. And then he goes, oh, special edition. No, still not what I'm looking for. And then he goes, oh, limited edition. That's what I want, limited edition books. So he looks at the results for limited edition books and thinks exactly what I was looking for. If that cognitive process, which it is, happens thousands of times, where people start with special collection, and Google sees that over and over again, they'll just preempt. So you'll sit down, you type special collection, and you look at the results, and it's all limited edition books, and you go, great, that's exactly what I was looking for. And Google goes, it's not what you asked for. Um, so they understand a lot, and then using user trails with the toolbar, they can actually follow you around. Don't forget, this is not just from a search query. This is from even if you bookmarked it and you direct navigate. It also means that the end user is helping Google to find more pages outside of the crawl by discovering pages that they didn't know about. So there's a huge change in content creation going on right now. Um, a small number of professional publishers created content. We call it mediated content. So these are publishers that were offline who came online, or perhaps like uh, one of the brands that I'm in charge of, Click Z, where we publish every single day and we have editors to do that. So we had millions and millions of pages created by uh, mediated uh, media companies, uh, even PR companies writing on behalf of their corporate clients. But they are being outnumbered by a factor of five to one by the end user, because the end user is in charge now. So consumer generated content or collaboratively generated content, as people use these days, is so much greater than mediated content. And Google, nor any other search engine, because of this protocol, HTTP, where they can't hit you so hard and keep bringing your website down, and nor can they do it in real time to collect the data that's happening, for instance, in Facebook, if Facebook would allow them in, uh, or over at Twitter. So now they have to ask for a partnership. For instance, with Twitter, they had to go cap in hand and say, we'll pay you just to give us the fire hose so that we can put when Ashton Kutcher changed his underpants into our results. Uh, Google's had sight of one trillion URLs. They posted that on their blog some time ago, but openly admit that they'll never ever be able to crawl that trillion URLs because by the time they get to the trillionth, it just won't be relevant or we'll all be dead or that'll be the end of that.